Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. This is your student Facebook meteorologist, Sean Bagden, here, and we're going to be going over the day one forecast for our second city of the National Forecast Challenge, which is Glens Falls, New York. We're going to be doing this for another eight forecast days through the next two weeks here. So uh, we're going to start out by looking at our upper level water vapor imagery here and we can see two main features uh, one right here is the uh, remnants of hurricane delta uh, now just a remnant low uh, getting pulled out here over the mid-atlantic region that is what caused us to have rain showers across southern new england today but now we have this other feature it is a cold front pushing to the east from the west as a uh, area of deepening low pressure approaches uh, the Hudson Bay up here and this looks like it will be producing precipitation uh, just out in front of it here and also can expect southerly flow and warm air advection out in front of it keeping temperatures rather stable across southern New England throughout the night tonight and likely rapidly falling through the afternoon and evening hours tomorrow so can expect an early morning high temperature across the um, Glens Falls area tomorrow uh, with falling temperatures throughout the day with some uh, rain showers around the region. Some may be convectively active, uh, especially along this cold front if we can get some instability to be acquired here. Also, gusty winds can be expected. Uh, expecting our nighttime lows to be occurring in the evening hours tomorrow, not so much in the early morning hours of today, is what I would expect given uh, what I'm seeing here on the upper level satellite imagery. Uh, we can clearly see this on SPC mesoanalysis. We have these gusty winds out in front of this cold frontal feature with slightly weaker winds off to the west with increasing dew points into. Uh, let's see the mid and low 60s here right out in front of it with that moisture return and uh, low to mid 30s dew points uh, way out in front of it across New England. That is why we're expecting temperatures to stabilize tonight as uh, dew points continue to rise through the evening and overnight hours here. So not expecting temperatures to drop much out of the 50s and low 40s here in upper 40s here uh, as we're seeing that moisture return occurring out in front of this front and then uh, looks like temperatures will rapidly drop behind this as our dew points uh, will be dropping into the uh, low 40s upper 30s back here and I uh, could be seeing some frosty conditions across the Glens Falls area tomorrow night. Uh, but we're going to be talking about tonight first. So we're going to start looking at models for, I believe it is uh, KGFL. I believe that's what we're seeing here. Hold on one second, everybody, just to make sure we're looking at the right METAR station here. Uh, yes, KGFL is what we're going to be looking at uh, when we're looking at our models here, 18Z on Monday. So here we go. We're going to initially start off with our NAM model run for uh, KGFL here. And uh, we're going to compare this to our current conditions as of 21Z. Uh, one second while we wait for this to come up. Looks like our computer is running a bit on the slow side here. Um, yep, here's KGFL. Perfect. And uh, we can see as of 21 UTC time here. Uh, that our temperature is at 55 degrees with a dew point of 35. So 55, 35. And we can see our current temperature looks pretty good. 
a little bit above uh a little bit above uh what we are expecting here and uh looks like our dew point is a little bit on the high side uh so looks like we're going to be uh what is that 35 uh that's six degrees above the dew point here and one degree above the temperature uh so what we're gonna do here is expect our temperature to be about uh, three to four degrees colder than it says here. Just do that dew point differential. Uh, definitely seems likely as we do have clear skies across the region right now, uh, which will lead to that more rapid cooling than expected here. So three to four degrees colder than what it's showing here, which seems pretty reasonable. Uh, so would be expecting temperatures. Oh, yep. There we go. Uh, 47. Uh, it looks like it dropped a little more there. Yep, there's 46. So uh, probably looking between 42 and 43 degrees for a low. Uh, seems pretty reasonable. Right here. Hold on. Oh, hold on. Uh, 42 and 43. Yeah, sure. For a low. And uh, then as we uh, go into the evening hours, we will also have another look at this again. Uh, again, temperatures will be remaining relatively steady through the day and then crash into the overnight hours. Uh, looks like our, yeah. Looks like 43 degrees looks is uh, pretty reasonable for a low temperature here with that uh, substance inversion allowing for a low stratus deck to take hold there, allowing temperatures to not fall as fast. Uh, but wouldn't be surprised to see temperatures drop to that uh, 43 uh, degree range here. So we'll start with uh, temperatures dropping to around 43 degrees. All uh, right, and then uh, we're going to expect temperatures to rise uh, about three to four degrees warmer uh, than what is expected here. We're going to go air on the side of caution and go that three degree route uh, just due to the fact that we do have that warm air advection with cloudiness in place. Uh, so they kind of counteract each other there and uh, temperatures will likely be rising a little slower than expected here. So expecting our high temperature at 21Z to be around 53 degrees would be my best guess here. So 10 degree temperature differential uh, does not sound too bad, especially with the conditions we will have in place here. Uh, we will now look at uh, temperature guidance guidance here on the HER model uh, just to look for some consistency here. Uh, this is the 18Z HER and we're going to look at hour 3 today just to uh, make sure everything looks all right um, and make our adjustments to the model here. Uh, 58 degrees and 40 um, okay. Uh, so this is showing us that we are three degrees above forecasted, uh, right now, and, uh, four degree, or, er, yeah, four degrees above what is forecasted for, uh, the dew point on the model. So, uh, that would be, uh, three and two. So five degrees difference here uh, is what we would be expecting. Uh, not too much of a surprise here. So five degrees below and five degrees above what this is showing right here uh, seems pretty reasonable. Uh, so here we go. Temperatures 
dropping through the evening to that 47 number and would expect to see them start to rise pretty shortly. And uh, looks like they're stabilizing around that 47, 48 number. Yep, there we go, 48 degrees here. Yep, looks like they stabilize there as warm air advection takes over. And uh, bottoms it out right around 48 degrees there. Uh, so 5 degrees less than 48 is going to be right around a 43 degree number there. Right, uh, uh, 42, yeah, 43, and uh, that's what we have right here for our low. So I think 43 seems pretty reasonable. Uh, let's have a look at the afternoon right here. Uh, into the evening hours. Oh, hold on. We're going to go look at 6Z. And here we go, it shows 52, so it doesn't look like temperatures drop that much uh, through the evening hours tomorrow. So expecting 43 to be our low tonight. Seems pretty interesting. Okay. So now that uh, we've confirmed that that's going to be our low temperature, uh, looks like we have some consistency there. Now uh, we're going to go to the h wharf. And H wharf again, uh, we're going to go up to this uh, 21Z time frame here. Oh, hold on. Got to get to 21Z today. Here we go. Uh, currently 59 over 37. Uh, that seems pretty accurate right there. Okay. Uh, so subtract. Or add four degrees, uh, subtract one. So about three degrees uh, colder than what is expected here. Seems interesting. And uh, we'll see where this ends up taking us. Uh, looks like it drops that temperature down to 46 right around that. Uh, time frame really not dropping the temperature too, too far. And uh, looks like we're pretty accurate uh, with that temperature dropping to around 43 degrees here. Uh, drops it down to 48, 46. 765. Yeah, drops it to around 45 degrees here overnight tonight. Interesting. Uh, and uh, we'll take this ahead to hour 29 here and uh, see what it does with it through the evening hours. Uh, make sure this is on Tuesday. Correct, it is. Very saturated profiles here, so expecting some heavy rainfall in place through the day. And uh, looks pretty consistent with that high temperature, around 53 degrees. Uh, so I think our temperatures are pretty reasonable here, so uh, not expecting too much above what we have there. Uh, in terms of temperatures, may drop out through the evening hours tomorrow, so that'll be interesting as we do that have that cold air advection coming in a loft. May go closer to that 42 range, but a lot of other models have it getting a little colder than that, so I think uh, 43 seems pretty reasonable with a 53 degree high. Uh, precipitation wise, uh, we'll bring this, oh, actually we'll go to wind. Wind is uh, a little bit more of our easy suit here, uh, AGFL. We're definitely much better at forecasting uh, wind speeds here. And we tend to use a NAM 3K for this, uh, using the 60% rule uh, of 
the mixed boundary layer. Uh, looks like winds overnight stay pretty light around five knots at the surface and really not much in the way of transport uh, from aloft with this strong inversion in place. So winds stay around five knots in the overnight hours, but as temperatures warm through the afternoon, we may acquire some more significant instability throughout the day. Uh, we'll see what happens to that inversion as it starts to whittle itself away. Uh, looks like winds so far not exceeding seven knots here. Very weak surface flow, kind of variable. I uh, wouldn't be surprised if winds stay around seven knots here. Yeah, and then, then it goes to very weak winds. Kind of surprising, though, just given what I've known about this area. But looks like not much instability in place. And uh, winds staying generally light throughout the day with that cold rain falling. Uh... Yeah, I'd say winds around 7 seven to maybe 10 knots here. Yeah, there we go. Uh, wind, winds do reach 10 knots at the surface, but really not much momentum getting forced to the surface here. Maybe in isolated rain showers they will, but um, that seems very unlikely given how stable the low levels of the atmosphere are here. So wouldn't expect winds much over 10 knots given what the NAM is showing. Uh, but we can use the H wharf to confirm this thinking here uh, with these winds. So here we go again. See if we can catch any of that instability here. Again, wind staying generally light due to that uh, very stable profile. Winds near the surface, again, being very light and variable around uh, that 5 to 10 knot range. We do start to acquire some instability uh, later on here. Yeah, you can see a little unstable layer developing, but really not in that area of higher wind. So I don't think we get much moisture transport here. Uh, winds, again, showing right around that 10 knot range here in the afternoon hours. I may even go as low as 9 knots. Because winds generally tend trend pretty light here. And then you can see them uh, start to increase as that frontal passage uh, comes through here in the afternoon hours as temperatures start to warm. But again, really not seeing that increase occurring here to those low-level wind speeds. Just not seeing the instability to do that. If we did have some uh, solar heating in place, this would be a completely different story in a high wind event for sure, kind of like last week. But really not seeing all the variables come into play here. Uh, with this frontal passage. May go around 8 to 9 knots here for a final wind speed. Yeah, I, th I think that's what we're going to go. Uh, we'll have a look at this final frontal passage. But definitely uh, seeing those winds slacken behind the front. I think it's a good bet that we see... Uh, around a 9 knot wind here. Seems very reasonable, uh, at least to me. Uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll go 9 knots here for our wind. Oh, not for precipitation. We're going to go 9 knots for our wind here. Seems like a reasonable idea. Uh, then we have our precipitation. This is going to be very interesting with a convectively active uh, cold front coming through here. Could get kind of interesting because convection 
is definitely very hard, especially with a fine line of convection just like that. Uh, it's very hard to forecast. And with these convective showers bubbling up uh, with that remnants of delta here across the region, uh, definitely makes for a very messy precipitation forecast throughout the day tomorrow. Casa area looks like a deformation band tries to develop there uh, in that convergence boundary between uh, Delta and the cold front here. Looks like showery weather persists through the day tomorrow. Uh, could definitely see a good amount of accumulation, especially with Delta uh, increasing in strength, or the remnants of Delta increasing in strength through the sweet spot in the Gulf of Maine. Could definitely lead to some rather significant precipitation amounts. Uh, nothing incredible, but definitely a chance of some more significant amounts here uh, across the region. Uh, so let's have a look at what models, especially the NAM here, are showing for our total QPF forecast. Uh, seeing some amounts here reaching upwards of one and a half inches across that uh, Glen Falls area. I believe it's right around in here. It's right around an inch or so, which is definitely interesting. Uh, let's go head over to the H Wharf here. Uh, sh see what that shows. Uh, this is through 6Z on Wednesday. Again, showing those significant rainfall amounts within that deformation band here. Uh, showing right around that one and a half inches of rain. Uh, absolutely incredible amounts of rain for this time of year across the area. But I would tend to go on the lighter side here with more of a 0.8 inch amount uh, like the H wharf is showing. Uh, but it's definitely a possibility to see over an inch of rainfall just given how moist the environment getting sucked up from the Gulf of Mexico with this tropical system is. I could definitely see over an inch of rain occurring within that area. We're going to go to the HRRR here, uh, more of a high res view, high resolution view of this uh, scenario here. And again, Seeing a pretty sharp gradient here, but looking like uh, three quarters of an inch of rain is definitely in play here across the area. Uh, we'll look at some less high resolution data here in the GFS, and this is also showing us right around that half inch uh, marker here. Look at the GFS high resolution, and again showing around that half inch marker. Uh, European model, see if that gives us rainfall amounts, and yet here we go again, showing us right around that half inch mark with this deformation band uh, being pretty consistent here across New Hampshire, which is definitely interesting. Uh, and then finally the Canadian model uh, showing that deformation band yet again with the secondary band right over Glens Falls being around three quarters of an inch. So I would be feel pretty safe going uh, with that three quarters of an inch marker here, especially uh, with this plume of Pwats getting pulled into the region with the remnants of Delta here. Um, so definitely thinking of going on the high end of guidance here. Uh, when we look at that weather challenge forecast guidance, uh, we're going to initially say 0.75 inches, and then we'll uh, see what model runs are closest to that on Brian Tang's uh, weather challenge website. But definitely seems pretty reasonable as there is consistency within the models to see around that three quarters of an inch of rainfall within that area here. So now here is our weather challenge uh, forecast guidance here. 
And we can see we do have some of these uh, higher temperatures reaching the 53 degree range here. Definitely seems reasonable. These low temperatures I'm really not seeing occurring here being around 49 degrees as temperatures have already started to drop to around that 49 degree level with dew points uh, still quite low across the region. So we do still have room to drop our temperatures, especially with clear skies in place across the area. Uh, could definitely see us dropping into those uh, lower to mid 40s through the morning hours tomorrow and definitely into the evening tomorrow. That is definitely a good possibility here. Uh, so I think staying with 43 degrees for a low uh, seems pretty reasonable here, I would say. And uh, let's go back here. Precipitation, this is definitely going to be the harder part. A lot of models not showing it uh, reaching all that high tomorrow, which showing right around that 0.3 inch range, but I do see the potential for significant rainfall across the area tomorrow, just watching this uh, frontal boundary explode here and that moisture getting pulled north as a gulf from our uh, post hurricane delta here uh, with that warm air vection coming in. Uh, let's have a look at our temp wind and dew point plots here. Um, looks like dew points staying around the 40s here and we have temperatures dropping into the low 40s here. Interesting. That's uh, from the rapid refresh model showing low temperatures around the 43 to 44 degree range there in the uh, Glens Falls region. So would not be too surprised to see temperatures uh, drop to that 43 degree range here overnight. Precipitation definitely a little shaky on that 0.75 but I think we will be able to get there. Uh, may end up needing to change that after this live stream is made, but we'll make updates to that as we go. Here's your wind forecast, uh, brought to you by Brian Tang's website. Oh, hold on. Here we go. Uh, this is per the NAM. It looks like those maximum boundary layer winds, uh, do get up to the 24 knot range here. But looks like they stay relatively low here. I would go more the boundary layer average, uh, but that's just me because boundary layer winds stay relatively light here. And especially since it's overnight. Here we go, 6Z. Uh, looks like t it doesn't go much above 20 knots there which would show it, yeah, look, throughout the day when we get that instability in place, uh, generally stays right around that 5 to 9 knots. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll stay with our 9 knot wind forecast. That seems very reasonable for this, just given what the average wind shows here, uh, at least the past 7 days. This seems like a very reasonable forecast, at least uh, from my point of view. So I think that's what we're going to go with here. Uh, high temperature 53, low 43. Precipitation is in question, but we'll stay with 0.75 for now and a wind of 9 knots. Uh, that's our final forecast here for, Grant, for uh, Glens Falls, New York, uh, day one of the forecast challenge. Have a great day, everybody.